Hello there, Virgo. It's so good to see you. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today we are doing your May 2022 Tarot Love Reading. So we'll take a look at the overall energies with the Oracle cards um, into your romantic love life, and then we'll take a look with the Tarot about any obstacles on your path or advice that Spirit has for you. And um, I really do appreciate all of your support by, you know, liking, commenting, subscribing. I really do appreciate all of your support. Okay, so let's jump into your reading, The Fates. <laughs> what is this, Virgo? You got somebody destined on your path coming in. Wow, just a really lovely energy. Very light, I would have to say. Um, just really exciting. Okay, so let's get into your uh, soulmate cards and see what you have here. Receive potential healing. Oh my goodness, union. Um, a Virgo. <laughs> this is, and I will have to say, uh, I am almost done doing all of the love readings for May. And so far, this is the best one. I will have to say they have been a little bit difficult. And I love this. Look at this. Somebody new coming in. Um, you're ready to receive, you know, with this energy, it's kind of like you've done the healing, you know, You've um, gone inside, you've healed the inner child, you've looked at the past relationships, you've cleared out all the cobwebs, and now you're in this energy of receiving, which brings in somebody that is potential. And with the healing, I feel like this person is going to come in and help you to do that final healing. Sometimes, you know, when we actually step into a new relationship that makes us feel wonderful, right? Um, it does help us to do that final bit of healing um, that sometimes we, you know, we can always heal ourselves, but there is this energy of really kind of like finally saying goodbye to something in the past and with union after a very long time of maybe being alone, you're coming into this energy of finding somebody. I love this. Oh, I love this so much for you, Virgo. Um, yeah, this is a nice energy. Okay, so let's see what the Romeans angels have for you. Forgiving and learning, retreat and wedding and chemistry. Okay, Virgo, this is somebody you're... They're, all I can hear is hot to trot. <laughs> Um, uh, really interesting. Okay. Forgiving and learning. That's the past. You know, you've done that. You've taken a look at past relationships and you've done all the forgiving, you know, forgiving of the other person, forgiving of the situation, forgiving of yourself. You've done the learning by taking a look at it, spending time if you need to by yourself to do that deep healing. You know, you're, you're not rushing into the next relationship. You've taken that time out to really figure out what it is that you want. And I feel this is a, this is a relationship that definitely, um, uh, you know, is um, a potential to go into a long-term committed relationship. So, oh, wow. Okay, so let's see if we can get some more details about this. So we're going to take a look at your present energy, your area of resistance or your obstacle, um, advice from spirit, and then the outcome if you take the advice. But remember, Virgo, you have free will. So um, make decisions that you think are best for you. Okay, so I am going to anchor each of these with the Oracle card, and then we'll come back to the Tarot to... Um, Oh, really nice. Okay. Intuition and manifestation. I feel like you are in a manifesting um, time period right now. So one of the things that you have to keep in mind <laughs> when you're manifesting is that you want to keep all of your thoughts um, on what it is you're trying to bring in and staying really positive, making sure all of your affirmations that you're using are very positive in nature and, you know, forward looking. Wow. Judgment card on the bottom. Big decision coming in. Um, okay. We're also coming into a Mercury retrograde. So there could be somebody returning from the past, but I really feel like you're making a judgment about how to move forward. And I feel like you are moving forward. This is lovely energy. So for your present, um, uh, energy. You have great gratitude and ace of wands, lovely energy. This is about, you know, taking a, a, a look. 
I think you've, you've already done this. This is why you have the great gratitude of what has occurred in the past. And it's, it's, uh, it's stepping into that energy of understanding that what somebody else may have done was not done to you. It was done for you. And you're in this energy of being really grateful for even a painful experience in the past because you're understanding that it helped you to open up to uh, greater wisdom, um, more understanding of yourself and other people. It's a lovely energy of, okay, I am ready for a fresh start because with the Ace of Wands, this is getting that inspiration. It's kind of like, you know, it's almost like you wake up one day and it's kind of like, you know what? I'm done healing and I'm ready for love. And um, I really do love this energy. So yeah, let's clarify this and see what we have here. Seven of Cups, Queen of Swords, Knight of Cups, and the Hermit. There you are. You're showing up in your own reading. Nice energy. Yeah, I think you're looking at all of the options. Um, okay, so there's a couple of ways you could read this. You could have a lot of options coming in, a lot of love options. And with the Queen of Swords, you're looking at them, right? Um, but you're you're looking at them logically, analytically. You're, you, you know what it is that you want and you're kind of like, yes, no, yes, no. You know, whatever it is, you're kind of like taking the sword and you're, you're you're not wasting time let's put it that way you're not wasting time with anyone that isn't on your path you know in a way it's kind of like yeah this isn't going anywhere i'm not wasting time i've wasted time already in a past relationship you could have been in a long-term relationship that never got to a true commit committed level um, in the past. And so you're kind of like, yeah, I, I see the red flags, <laughs> you know, I didn't listen to them in the past, but this time I know what the red flags are and I am cutting out any of the options of, you know, um, potential lovers that are not meeting the criteria, you know, um, but it's also doing it with a little bit of love. It's not just analytical. I love this because with the Knight of Cups, it's also about stepping into your, your, your energy of choosing and not just analytically, but also with a little bit of love. And I think you're ready to express your love to others. You're looking for a companion that can express their, their love too. So I feel like you're cutting out any, anyone that you know, uh, seems to be, let's say secretive or doesn't want to, um, you know, share their, I don't know, their, their love history or something like that. And, you know, people don't necessarily share that on the first or second date, right? <laughs> but it's kind of like when you get to a certain point, it's kind of like, yeah, I'd like to know, you know, uh, what your history is, you know, uh, what brought you to the point where you're looking for a uh, love. Um, so it's kind of interesting because I feel like you're in a really good spot. Um, you know, when somebody asks you about your past relationships, you're not coming in with bitterness. You know, you're coming in with, yeah, you know, yeah, it didn't work out. But wow, you know, th this is what I learned out of that situation and being really grateful for that person having been on your path, even though it may have ended very painfully. Um, okay, so your area of resistance is behind a mask and the Ace of Swords. And, you know, this is so interesting because to me, these are like opposites, right? <laughs> this is seeing the truth for what it is. Um, and you know, stepping into, this is like the queen of swords, you know, stepping into truth, having victory. And then behind a mask is like not necessarily speaking the truth. And that could be you or that could be the person that you're dealing with. So let's clarify this and get some more information because it's a little bit of a back and forth type of energy or portraying one thing but um, not portraying the truth of a situation. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, all right, Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, whatever this is, it's taking a while to come in. Um, you know, 
with the king of cups uh this is an energy it could be a water sign so that would be cancer pisces scorpio but just not you know there's a sense of not being happy with any of the options that have come in um, and once again, I feel like you're looking for somebody that can express their feelings. The King of Cups can do that, express their feelings openly and um, rationally, you know, you can have a conversation. There's somebody that listens really, really well, is very compassionate. Um, and I feel as if you haven't been able to find that. That is something that you're looking for in your relationship, that you want somebody that you can share your feelings with, right? And especially with this Knight of Cups here, you want somebody that you can share your, truthfully share your feelings with instead of hiding behind a mask. And this is just somebody that hasn't come in on your path yet. It's the obstacle. It's, um, it's being open and willing to wait for someone that can express their feelings um, and being in a place where you're willing to open up and share your feelings. So there's a couple of things here. If you've been like out, you know, dating because we have the seven of cups, looking at options for love and you're having a hard time finding somebody that you feel safe around, safe enough to share your, uh, you know, your, your 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 feelings your your past um what it is that you're looking for in a relationship you just feel like you're you're always hiding a little bit like you don't want to express everything then there may be some other healing that you need to go back in it's about trust there's like a sense of needing to trust the person but I would also say that if you feel like you're not getting into situations where you feel like you can trust another person, then it's about really manifesting, looking at, are you in an area of wanting to trust and to open? Remember, and it's so funny because all the earth signs are getting this message that you have to be in a position, you have to be what it is that you want to attract. So if you want somebody that can openly express their their emotions, right, then you have to also be a person that's willing to openly share your emotions. Um, and so I feel as if that is a little bit of the obstacle here is stepping into the energy of being exactly what it is that you also want to attract. So let's take a look at your advice. Creative endeavor and king of wands. Okay, the king of wands could um, be Sag, Air, uh, Aries, or Leo, but it, the king of wands is somebody that is kind of like stands in their power, is very confident, is a leader, is going forth. And with the creative endeavors, you know, like starting, you know, uh, gender doesn't matter here. It's about uh, like, possibly starting a business based on your create creativity or something that you want to um, do, create, or give to the collective. There's this energy of stepping, needing to truly step into who you are. The King of Wands does not care what other people think. They're very proud of what they are producing, uh, what they are creating. Um, and in a good place with what it is that they are creating and giving out to the world, uh, willing to shine their light and not care what anybody else thinks. So going back to this mask, it, it brings up the question, is there something about what you create or what you would like to create? that you are holding back when you are talking to other people, whether it is in a romantic relationship or a possible romantic relationship or just with friends and family. It's about taking a look at that because um, there needs to be perhaps like more confidence in what it is that you are creating, knowing that you um, are creating something that is beautiful, healing, needed by the collective. Um, I know, you know, a lot of times the King of Wands uh, also represents somebody that is on their spiritual path. You may be um, somewhat... Um, 
showing some, you see how the mask covers part of her face. You may be kind of like willing to share some of your spiritual path or some of your spiritual thinking or some of what you are creating, but you may not be sharing all of it. Okay, um, not willing to yet do that. And so it's about taking a look at why are you not opening that part of yourself up? Because you are attracting somebody in that um, would love to hear that. Okay, so if you're attracting somebody in that would love to hear about your spiritual journey or what it is that you're hoping to create or wanting to create in the future or are creating now, um, then it's about really opening yourself up to expressing that with confidence. And sometimes we have to start doing that, practicing that with close friends or family members that support what it is that we are creating. Um, before you can start doing it with a stranger that you're going out with coffee or, you know, even the second or third day. Um, yeah, there's something there about not quite uh, ready to share, you know, what your spiritual, because you have the judgment card here, what your soul's purpose is or what your spiritual path is or how that has gotten you to this point. Yeah, devil. Um, I feel like for some of you, it's because... You, you feel like, it, you know, you've gotten on top of where you're going. You, It's kind of like you're on your path, you're doing well, and yet at the same time, you're not really quite yet ready to share it with the world or share it with strangers or share it with a new romantic love because, you know, there's still some healing that needs to be done there. And I'm going to come back to this. You know, I feel like this person is going to help you to step into your confidence. It's you have to first share um, some of your feelings. It doesn't mean you have to throw it all out there <laughs> at once. But I feel like this person is going to help you to see just how important your soul's purpose is to the world. They're going to cherish it. But you have to get to the point where you can confidently talk about it um, because I feel like they're going to be willing to get on board. They're going to be passionate about it also. Really, um, you know, somebody that's coming onto your path in order to, to maybe even join you with your soul's purpose, you know, in some way, um, because I'm going to come back. This is a fated connection. This is somebody that is meant to be on your path for a particular reason. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, Eight of Pentacles. See, I feel like they're going to want to work on this connection. And I think they may even want to work with you on whatever this is. All right, so we have deception and we have sun. You see how two, these are like two opposite energies, right? This is, you know, feeling like people are just deceiving you behind your back or, you know, not wanting you to acquire what it is that you want um, because the sun card is the happiest card in the deck. It's receiving all the love, the joy, the abundance that you are wanting or trying to manifest in your life. And then we have the deception card. And I feel in a way you're almost deceiving yourself from attaining this because it's you're, uh, you, there's some fear about putting your true self out there of stepping into this king of wands energy. But when you step into that King of Wands energy, that confidence of being able to talk about what it is that you are trying to create in the world or, you know, what you're passionate about in life, you know, and that could be just a hobby. You know, I shouldn't say just a hobby. It's something that you're passionate about. Um, it doesn't have to be your life's work, but it's something that you're passionate about, but that you're still kind of holding back. This person is going to help you understand that you're, you're holding back your own light. I feel like they're going to come in and help you to, to see how important your light is, that you can't dim it, you know, 
uh, to wish upon the star because your wishes are going to come true after a very long time of waiting for your wishes to come true. And this is not just in romance. This is like in all areas of your life with the sun card. You have the sun card twice. I mean, <laughs> you don't get more joy than that. And um, I feel as if it's just this energy that this person comes in and recognizes that whatever your idea is, whatever your passion is, whatever it is that you're trying to create, okay, for the world. And I feel like you may be like, uh, uh, almost like a trailblazer in this area. Um, that it's exactly what the world needs. I feel like they're not going to steal the idea from you. They, they want you, they're going to be extremely supportive. Let's put it that way. They're going to be extremely supportive. And you're not, I feel like in a way, you're not going to be used to that because you may have been in a lot of relationships where when you shared one of your ideas or your dreams or something that you were wanting to create, the other person poo-pooed your idea, right? And um, so you're, you're now kind of tentative. You don't want to share your ideas as much. And there's this energy of this person coming in and saying, Virgo, this is a great idea. Let's go do it. You know, um, I'll help you. Or what can I do to help you? Am I focused on what I want most? There you go. See, not hiding what it is that you truly want. One reason so few of us achieve what we truly want is that we never direct our focus. We never concentrate our power. Most people dabble their way through life, never deciding to master anything in particular. And that's a Tony Robbins quote. What you focus on grows. Today, ask yourself, is my life a reflection of my values or do I need to make adjustments and prioritize? So I feel like this person, like you may have a little bit of a whim of something that you would like to create, but maybe right now you're not focused on it, right? And I feel as if you're either going to get focused and really put your time and energy into this endeavor, or this person is going to come in and help you to see, um, to get inspired, to become more focused, um, to realize that this really is your soul's purpose really lovely okay so here is your um lover's oracle card friendship nurture the bonds of friendship within your relationship and your love life will dramatically improve you know i think that that's a really good way to sum this up because one of the things is is that when we have a romantic partner yes you can have a lot of chemistry um, and passion in a romantic relationship but one of the things is is that that your person your romantic partner should also be a really good friend somebody that you feel like you can sit down and talk about anything with right and I feel like you haven't had that in the past this is the difference with this relationship. You may actually build the friendship in this relationship before it even moves into the more passionate end of it. But that is what is going to help build a really strong foundation in this new love. Wow, Virgo. <laughs> I love this energy. Um, well, I do do personal readings. If you're interested, the link is in the description box below. But I really do wish you so much love and light in this situation and in all your situations. And I'm so excited for you, Virgo. This is a lovely um, high energy reading. So I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.